Everyone, welcome to another episode. Today we're going to be discussing uh, service scopes. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank um, all my subscribers and viewers. I'm on 600 now. And I'm steadily approaching 1,000, which is going to be my uh, next goal. And just wanted to say thank you for uh, sticking around. If you have, if you're new, welcome, subscribe, like, and hopefully you'll enjoy the content. So I've set up this uh, little application. Uh, this is going to be uh, available uh, on GitHub to play around with and download. But basically, the whole premise of it is I have three services here. One's transient, one's scoped, and one is singleton service. And today we are going to understand what is the difference between adding a transient, adding a scoped, and adding a singleton service to our dependency injection container, which is the iService collection. Okay, so the setup for this project is basically I have this uh, iService interface and all I want my iService implementation to do is to return a string, which is going to be a generated GUID. And I have three services. So the first one, let's take a look at this. Uh, th they actually look all pretty much the same. Uh, they have an interface that is basically represents uh, the registration type and uh, all they're doing, they have a constructor where once the object or the implementation is created, that's when we create a unique, unique GUID and uh, when we call the get GUID function, that's when we return the GUID, okay? And this implementation is pretty much the same for all three services. The reason they have different names is just so I can retrieve a specific one and still know which one it is here so all these three services have been uh, a registered transient service was registered as transient scoped as scoped and singleton as singleton right so moving on uh, i now have my home controller where i essentially inject uh, these services and then i have three pages where i go ahead and try to use these services okay so let's go ahead and launch our application. At the moment, we're on the index page, and the index page is the one which renders the singleton GUID. All right. So I also have in my project, uh, if I look on the index page and on the scope, pa scope page, I also render a partial, where in the partial view, what I do is I essentially they again they all look the same but what i do is i inject that respective service into the partial view and i render the good from there as well okay so this big id here this is what i pass into the model as a model to the view and this is what i pass in as an injection in the partial view all right so if i go to the index page where i render my partial view I'm not actually passing any data into it. I am uh, injecting the service into the partial view, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look what we get. So on the singleton page, if I stretch this out a little bit, we can see that the GUID on the page is exactly the same, okay? Uh, if we refresh the page or we try to refresh it, the GUID doesn't change. What does this mean in terms of the service? All right. So if we go to the implementation of the service and this GUID that is returned from this function doesn't change, that means that the service remains exactly the same throughout the lifetime of the application. Okay. So it basically, it doesn't matter what you do. As long as your application doesn't shut down, your service, the instance, this object that you have created, will not change, will not get disposed of, and will remain the same, okay? So the primary uses for it is having stuff like caching services, and maybe some global configuration, which won't change, and you just want that same object, you just want to inject it, and you want it, you want it to do exactly the same thing, which is, again, good for business rules, which might be objects with, like, collections of functions, which might not have too much state at that point, but if you want to persist some state throughout the lifetime of the application, uh, again, this uh, singleton service can be really good. And also there is an HTTP, uh, you, you might want to put HTTP clients 
into your singleton services and the reason why I left a link here it's a nice little blog article which describes how HTTP clients and C sharp work so you might want to go check that out okay now this singleton service is something that is created once and is just sort of it's there and when you call upon it you get the same instance doesn't matter where you inject it in your application it's always the same moving on to the scoped one you can see that in the partial and in the GUID we get the same IDs, but if we refresh the page, the what's it called? The partials change, but they're still the same. This tells us that whenever we use a scoped service for a request, the ID will remain the same, but if you issue another request, the ID will change. This means a new object, a new instance is created every time you make a request. So what is this useful for? To be honest, I have not used a scoped service. I haven't gone and created uh, something that actually required a scoped service. I always either lent towards a singleton or a transient, but a, I could imagine if I would want to use a scoped service, it'd be something to persist a state through the application request. The way I'd imagine it is like a bucket, which basically gets created at the start of a request. And if it's a long-winded request and you need to sort of maybe perform an atomic operation, uh, you would slowly fill, fill up this bucket throughout the services that get called in your application. And then by the end of it, it will get disposed. Okay, so if you think you need some sort of that functionality where you want to have some state that will persist and you want to call upon it from different parts of the application in a request, then scoped is your choice of weapon, all right? And moving on to transient, uh, we can see that the GUID on the page is different from the partial view. And if we refresh, again, they're both different. So the primary reason for this is that anytime we extract a service that is a transient service from our dependency injection container, that instance is always fresh and new. Remember that constructors get called when objects get created and we assign this GUID inside the constructor, okay? Where would you want to have a new object every single time throughout your application? Well, it's stuff that depends on state that's somewhere else, all right? So when you are basically outsourcing your state, so like a database access, uh, you're basically, you have a connection and you want to sever it, you basically, you spin up a new instance, you create a connection, and then you sever it, and you get disposed of it. File access, again, uh, you have a connection to a file, you have this stream, you have all this memory accumulating. You want to sort of create that bubble, and you want to throw it away at the end of it. Uh, services that should be disposed of their state, this is really kind of the underlying... Uh, principle of the transient service you, you you want some state or you have some connection that you just want to get make sure you get rid of uh, re remember that these services uh, .NET core takes care of basically disposing of them so uh, what i mean by that is usually when you'd create a class you'd have to do something like uh, implement from i disposable and then you'd need to create your own, uh, what's it called, dispose function. So if we implement this interface, you'd uh, have to basically do something like dispose of your GUID. So you'd have to say null here. Or if you have a connection, you'd have to like close connection safely. And just remember that if you have a transient or a scoped, whenever you're disposing of your state and your service, .NET Core takes care of that for you. And the last point that I had um, on there, yeah, it's just if you need a fresh instance of an object every single time. So let's say you have an object that has some state and uh, depending on which uh, functions you call in that object, the state will change. But if you reuse, try to reuse that state and call those functions again, uh, basically stuff will stop, start to break. So you need a fresh instance every single time. So that's when you want to opt in for a transient service. So hopefully you enjoyed this nice, nice short little video and learned something new. Again, if you like this video, like, subscribe, 
turn on notifications. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you want to make any video requests, you can leave that in the comment as well. But for now, thanks for watching. Hopefully, I'll see you in my other episodes. Have a good day.